All right, what is up tycoons? What's up traders? Super excited for today's video. We're gonna be taking a look at SLG. This is the SL Green Realty Corp stock. And I wanna know your opinions down below. Is this a falling knife or is this a massive opportunity? We're gonna go over the charts and then after the charts, we're gonna dive into um, some different uh, data about the company. Now, this is related to the commercial real estate sector in New York, in New York City specifically, and commercial real estate is something that there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of FUD uh, and concerns about, rightfully so. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to dive into all of that and give you guys a nice breakdown. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And we're starting off here with the monthly chart. And the reason being is because we are testing the financial crisis lows, okay? We have this demand zone that we bounced off of in uh, the late 90s and then during the great financial crisis, we put in these lows here as well. And this is our demand zone here on the monthly time frame. And you can see that we came down and we're testing these levels here currently. All right. This thing has pretty much evaporated all of the gains since uh, 2009 and done a complete circle back down. <clears throat> so, um, you know, and we also had a very nice head and shoulders right here kind of forecasting, um, you know, some of the possible possibilities of this really retesting the lows. And if you take a look, we essentially broke this neckline here. All right. And once we broke our neckline, uh, we got that move down and it could take us down below $10 if this continues to play out. Now, one of the things that has me looking at it uh, from a technical analysis standpoint is the bullish divergence forming, right? So take a look <clears throat> how we have a low here and we're creating this lower low right now. So clearly the stock is definitely in a downtrend. It's going lower. But if we look at our RSI, it's measuring the relative strength of a stock at its given price. And we're actually in an uptrend creating higher lows. So this thing is building relative strength while the price is collapsing much lower. Um, oftentimes this leads to some type of bullish activity. Now it doesn't mean have to mean that you know this thing is about to go to the moon or anything like that. Um, but a lot of times, you know, this is an indicator that people using technical analysis will look uh, for possible entries. Now, this is the weekly chart time frame, and markets tend to move in five wave structures as well as three wave structures. And to me, it seems like we're getting this five wave structure. And if we continue to get that five wave structure and head uh, back down below $10, we could end up coming all the way down as low as 641. OK, um, now here on the weekly time frame, again, we are making bullish divergence, right? Take a look at the lows and then the lower lows. But here we have low and then we have higher lows. And we've already bounced off of this trend line once before. Um, and, you know, now we're testing it again. So if we end up breaking through that trend line, most likely that's when we're going to come down into this demand zone um, and, and try to find some buyers down here in the 640 um, to, you know, like twenty dollar region. All right. Um, so, you know, from a technical analysis standpoint, it does look like there's still more room to drop, like we could drop more, um, you know, uh, whether it's this five wave structure on the weekly chart or whether it's that monthly chart head and shoulders, um, there is still more room to the downside. But what's interesting, as I mentioned, is we both have uh, bullish divergence on the weekly and the monthly chart timeframes. So we may actually see some type of bullish activity um, you know, over the coming weeks or months. That's something that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on personally and just looking. I don't have any positions in this stock. I'm not telling you guys to buy or sell, but rather just trying to go over some data and present you guys some information for free on YouTube. Now, rightfully so, the percentage of shares outstanding short has been increasing, right? And as I mentioned before, uh, this stock is related to the commercial real estate sector in New York City. Uh, and there's a lot of FUD surrounding that um, sector right now, specifically commercial real estate, right? And so we can see that the um, percentage of shares uh, outstanding short has gone through another surge and increase. And we've also seen that, you know, there's been a huge collapse in the price of the stock here as well. So shorts may end up taking profit. But uh, one thing to note is that shorts oftentimes are very greedy, right? And so... Most of the time, it's institutions and hedge funds going short, and they want to drive something down to zero, right? They want to get the price as low as they can, and 
Um, you know, sometimes they continue to pile on shorts uh, as their winning strategy is working. Uh, they double down and reinvest in things that are winning. Now, if you take a look at the short interest uh, during the great financial crisis, okay, you can see we had a peak here, uh, which is pretty much right where we're at right now. Okay, uh, we're peaking right towards the, the end of the 09, but it also went up as high as about 24 to 26 percent uh, or 24 to 25 percent in that region. So there's definitely still room to go to the upside when it comes to, you know, uh, the percentage of shares basically being sold short. Um, you know, this is, is, still could continue to go higher. Right. And that could help drive price down further. But there's some interesting things to take into consideration uh, on whether or not maybe this is something you want to buy. Now, one thing I do want to highlight is that they have been increasing their dividend uh, on a very consistent basis ever since uh, 2012. Right. They started increasing their dividend. And so for 10 years in a row, uh, the dividend has gone up very nicely. And I just want to highlight that I think a huge dividend slash is incoming, right? And a lot of times when these dividend slashes happen, um, investors sell the stock because if you're a dividend investor, you're holding it for the very nice dividend. And if they cut it by a large amount, then maybe you know investors aren't really going to be interested necessarily in it for a, a, a dividend. Um, and the reason being is because look at this, look at the 09, 2010 region, right? In 2008, all right, we had the great financial crisis going on 2008, 2009, and look at what they did. They cut the dividend from over $3 to below $1, and then the next year, they cut it again uh, even more. So to me, it seems very likely that being that you know we're back at these uh, financial crisis lows when it comes to the price of the stock, and that we're also going through a lot of FUD in uh, commercial real estate, it would not surprise me at all if their dividend gets slashed and they do end, uh, end up cutting the dividend payment uh, sometime in 2023, uh, maybe even in 2024 as well. So that's definitely something you want to consider, right? But when we take a look here uh, on the bottom left, what we have is New York City employment recovery. Uh, and this is something that is having a steady incline, okay? And so if you take a look here, this is... Um, April 2020, right here, April, May, June, all right, and you can see since that period, it's actually been on a steady incline, all right, and basically, these are the offices, uh, these are office using jobs, right, so these aren't necessarily people full-time in the office, um, but these are office using jobs, and it's been on a steady incline, um, so, you know, a lot of people are saying that, um, you know, basically commercial real estate is being doomed because of, you know, work from home uh, and things like that. Uh, and, you know, people doing hybrid work where they're doing half work from home, half at the office. Uh, but as you can see here, there's actually been a steady incline going on. And as the layoffs and recession, um, you know, FUD spreads throughout the market and throughout the U.S., uh, a lot more people are going to be having to show face, right? and actually show up to work and make sure their boss sees them working and put in that FaceTime really uh, to help, you know, secure their job, right? And get that extra job security. Now, what's really interesting, when you take a look um, at their buildings that have 90% uh, or more occupancy, um, you can see here that many of their buildings are above 90%. One Vanderbilt is at 99%. Now, the thing with SOG, is they are invested in the top prime, like grade A commercial real estate in New York City. And we know that New York City is one of, you know, the biggest cities in the world and the U.S. when it comes to business and, you know, finances and just, you know, a lot of money making. So they're not in like the, the, the very low grade commercial real estate. They are in the prime grade A real estate, uh, commercial real estate in New York City. Which even, you know, with the pandemic and even uh, with, um, you know, the, the FUD around commercial real estate, um, these are still some of the prime real estate, uh, commercial real estate uh, places, you know, in the U.S. And you can see here that many of their buildings have over 90 percent capacity, right? And or, or occupancy, rather. Um, now, you can take a look here and they have some of their OPEC saving strategies, uh, you can dive into these a little bit more and research these uh, for some of your own, but they go over, you know, some of the ways that they're going to uh, reduce frequencies and cleaning. 
uh, implement dynamic adjustments, strong indemnification. They're going to negotiate beneficial contract terms, implement energy projects. Uh, they have, they're going to employ labor directly uh, to avoid sales tax, negotiate collective bargaining agreements, deploy in-house labor when it comes to research and marketing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can really dive into um, this stock. Let me know, is this thing a falling knife and is it going to continue heading lower and go to that $10 price range, maybe even that $6 price range, or is this potentially a buying opportunity and could we see some type of bullish activity uh, due to those divergences that I've noted on the weekly and monthly timeframes? Thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new.